Hello everyone, my name is Luca Moser, I'm a senior software engineer at the IOTA Foundation and in this video I'm going to talk about the Hornet 0.4 release. So first of all, what is actually Hornet? So Hornet is an IOTA node implementation uh, which is written in collaboration with the community and the IOTA Foundation. Meaning that people from the community and myself as an employee um, of the IOTA Foundation are together developing this node implementation. The project itself is funded by the Ecosystem Development Fund, um, which gives out grants to um, open source projects which extend or build on top of IOTA. So with this uh, 0.4 release, um, Hornet now also became the replacement for uh, Irie, which was the previous main node software. Um, yeah, and Hornet itself is written in Go, um, and it tends to have very low resource consumption. On the bottom left, you see our mascot, um, which is like a typical gopher, uh, as you would have in any Go uh, programming language project. And on the right, you have our more corporate uh, logo. So the Hornet team um, consists, as I just said, out of three community members. So that's uh, Maximilian Hase, Alexander Sporn, and Sebastian Fuchs, and myself. Um, we, are, we have been working together since um, September uh, 2019. Um, yeah, and we are just a really great team. Uh, we are all very enthusiastic about IOTA. Um, and we are very happy to actually be able to release this version. So yeah, exactly. 0 0.4 um, is this version we released. Um, we actually have a massive change log. I didn't um, mention all the changes uh, in the bullet list, but those are the more uh, prominent ones. We basically rewrote most of the code base, um, as you can see from the amount of files changed. Um, and I want to go into each of those um, topics I've listed here. So first of all, uh, auto-peering. Uh, with this version, now the node is able to automatically peer um, to up to four other nodes without the node operator having to do anything. And this is, this is in contrast to um, before where you would have to hop onto our Discord server and search for other people um, to which you could peer to. Um, and it basically also was a hassle um, because you always had to go after people and ask them why their nodes were offline and stuff like that. So now with this auto peering, you don't really have to think about that anymore. And I want to mention here that this auto peering um, is actually a module from the Hive.go project, um, which is basically a shared repository between the GoShimmer and the Hornet project. GoShimmer being the um, IOTA node implementation, um, which implements the core design specification. So this module is basically the first module from the core design coming to mainnet. Uh, I want to make the remark here though, that this isn't the complete auto peering with civil protection. So if you're actually still, um, if you're running a production node, uh, we still recommend to peer to some other static peers. Then another uh, major overhaul was the introduction of the object storage. Um, before we had an LRU cache where every cache had like a fixed capacity. And now with this new cache, um, it is more of a time-based um, manual cache, which allows us to reduce memory consumption even further. Um, and this is also something um, which was done over the course of the last few months, as it basically touched most of the files of the code base. And this is also something um, stemming from Hive.go. We've also um, optimized the dashboard a little bit and added new charts. So now we have a confirmation and the milestone chart, which um, allows you to basically, at a glance, uh, you know, to understand how the network is currently performing uh, regarding confirmation rate and CTPS. We've also added the database chart, which allows you to see how much data your node is actually consuming on its own. We also integrated um, 
a tangle visualizer into the dashboard um, just so that you can make up how the network looks like uh, without having to spin up um, another another software and you have it just integrated into the dashboard and we've also added the json and text payload viewer to all the um, transactions uh, in the explorer so hornet has a, a tangle explorer where you can search for transactions addresses bundles and so on and now you can also see on the transaction view um, you know json and text encoded um, data uh, from the transactions payload. Now the biggest change uh, probably is the change from BadgerDB to BoltDB. Um, the reason why we actually changed the underlying database engine was that um, with BadgerDB we had a problem that when people would have big databases like over 100 gigabyte the node would consume a large amount of memory just by booting up uh, we are speaking here about more than 10 gigabytes of memory usage just because you have a big database. Um, obviously, we didn't really um, found that to be reasonable, so we looked for alternatives and BoltDB um, basically showed itself there. And due to the switch, uh, we have now um, a very large uh, reduction in memory usage. And we only little you know, we only really really um, traded in a little bit of write performance, but um, the read performance increased. So this is a trade off we made. Um, it doesn't really um, matter that much uh, under normal node operation. And because of the switch, um, now actually pruning, uh, meaning the the deletion of very old data uh, on the tangle. Um, actually works now better because what you can do now with BoltDB is tune it so that the database size uh, stays constant. Another change is the way how the node synchronizes. So this is called warp synchronization, which basically is just a mechanism where the node, instead of having to first go from the present of the tangle to the past and getting all that data, um, it can start or will ask for the data nearest to its current state um, as soon as possible and then work itself up from there. And what this allows it to do is to solidify quicker, which uh, in turn makes it so that the synchronization overall is faster. And if you compare it to the old approach, basically as larger the data set is, the, the faster warp synchronization will actually be in comparison. And due to the fact that you don't have to walk from the present to the past first, um, this also actually uses uh, less CPU and has uh, less memory pressure. So in this chart, um, you see IRE 1.8.6, Hornet 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, um, synchronizing um, a 3.85 days data set. And you can see that, for example, IRE took the longest with 1 hour and 50 minutes. 0 0.3 um, about 9 minutes and 0 0.4 about 11 minutes. Now the difference between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 um, comes from 0 0.3 having a higher write throughput, um, however it consumes much more memory and the delta between the two isn't really that significant uh, in terms of um, time taken. So this is a really good trade-off and we're really happy about those results. We also added a coordinator plugin. So before, if you wanted to run an IOTA network for proof of concepts or experiments and so on, you would have to run an additional software called Compass, which would connect to your node and then actually issue the milestones on the network. With the coordinator plugin, you have this integrated into the Hornet node software. Um, which makes it much easier to actually run an, um, a network. And in particular, this plugin also has a faster Merkle tree generation than the tools which ship with Compass and also uses a fixed um, key derivation function, which allows you um, to actually issue milestones faster. We were also audited um, by a third party company called Falcon Force and they looked at the uh, well actual most crucial part of the node um, the tip selection bundle and state validation 
um, and making sure that there aren't really any major bugs there. Um, they didn't really find any severe bugs which would like have halted the network or the node, um, but they did find some bugs, of course, and those are available in 0 0.4. Now, here I want to mention that the audit is actually uh, an, an ongoing audit, so it doesn't mean that it just was done once, um, it is probably done on every major release. Then to some performance metrics, so 0 0.4 um, actually consumes 10 times less memory usage than 0 0.3 and IRE 1.8.6 has 7 times uh, faster synchronization than IRE 1.8.6 and all that while actually only consuming a tenth of one core um, on a commodity um, VPS. So those are very good results and with 0.4 you're actually now able to run multiple nodes uh, on one VPS since the resource consumption is so low. We also did a community stress test on the Comnet, which is the community network where we had a sustained 1,200 TPS um, and a CTPS rate of 620. You can see here on the right uh, two pictures depicting the TPS, CTPS and memory usage. Um, and you can see um, that basically the memory usage doesn't really grow um, that much. And it reached about 900 megabytes of average heap usage during um, this stress test. Okay, so before going into the demo, I want to give a quick outlook um, to what is coming up for Hornet um, in its next release. So this next release, um, which will be scheduled for end of July, uh, will include the white flag and the weighted uniform random tip selection algorithm. And those two components are part of Chrysalis and they will allow us to um, achieve a much higher throughput than what I just showed you and even faster confirmation times. If you are interested in what those two things are, there is a protocol RFC repository on GitHub, um, which basically explains uh, what those two things are. All right, so let's jump into the uh, demo where I will show um, how to install Hornet 0.4 on a VPS. All right, so for this demo, we're going to install uh, Hornet on a CPX31 instance um, at Hetzner. Uh, you can simply install Hornet using um, our app repository. So first, let's add the um, app repository public key. Then let's add the actual repository to the sources. And now we can simply install Hornet by doing an update. and uh, install Hornet. Now, before actually um, enabling the service and starting it, we want to modify the configuration a little bit. So the configuration is on the war lib Hornet and then config, config JSON. Um, and so in this configuration file, what we want to change for the purpose of this demo um, is the bind address of the dashboard so that we can access it from the internet. Now we need to enable the system service and then to finish, just simply execute it. So what will happen now is that Hornet um, is actually running and we can see the um, logs by using the journal control like this. So here Hornet is um, importing the spent addresses from the local snapshot it just downloaded. Okay, so here we have the dashboard um, of our Hornet node we just installed. It is currently um, looking for peers um, via the auto peering. And as soon as it has found some peers, it will automatically synchronize to the current network state. Okay, so here we go. It found one um, auto peered neighbor and uses it now to synchronize. This should only take a few seconds.
All right, cool. So now the node is synchronized and is fully operational and part of the network. Over time, the amount of connected neighbors will grow um, up to four neighbors. Okay, so to give a quick overview about the dashboard, um, the dashboard shows you the transactions per second in the network, um, the memory usage the node is consuming, um, and has other useful views such as the neighbor tab, which shows you the connected neighbors. Um, it has an integrated Tangle Explorer, so you can just simply go and see the actual transactions going through the network and query them and so on. It also has a visualizer um, where you see the network um, graph basically building up. And an additional tab where you can see um, multiple performance metrics such as tip selection, um, actually cache sizes, um, database size, and so on and so forth. All right, so that's actually it. Um, that's all you need to do um, in order to spin up a Hornet node. All right, so thank you so much uh, for checking out this video. Um, we, the Hornet team, hope that you will enjoy the 0.4 release. If you have any questions, you can hop onto Discord, or if you have any issues, um, you can file them on GitHub. And yeah, we are very excited to hear um, back from you. And I hope you will also install a Hornet node. Thank you.